Welcome to At the Table, a play reading series, brought to you by Charging Moose Media. In this episode, we are chatting with the cast and playwright of Time to a Phantom by Zach Ezer. Enjoy! Good morning! Good afternoon! Good afternoon. <laughs> I am... Um... I am doing this thing that I haven't done since college. This is at the table, by the way. This Hi, is at everyone. the table. We're, we're, we're at, at the table podcast. I'm doing this thing I haven't done since college, which is now that I know when my, um, uh, I'm just rolling out of bed at the last possible second before a class is required. Um, but it's yes. worse than college because I don't have to put shoes on or get anywhere Pants. else. Um, so we were supposed to be on this at 1.15 and I was out of bed at one thirteen, uh, like um, I don't know, just like a functioning member of society. So, um, good afternoon. Good, good af- afternoon. But you know what? Good, good morning, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks so much. I'm Rachel Flynn. I'm Ned Donovan. And we are thrilled to be back for our fourth installment. It's technically our fifth play, but it's our fourth week. Wow. Our, because we did two plays next last. That's week. right. That's right. That's right. Our fourth slash fifth installment of quarantine art. Uh, short plays and audio dramas and any manner of tiny arts, tiny quarantine arts. Yeah, is that a that was a good way to describe them? That was that was clear. I'm not sure I know what it is we're doing, honestly and truthfully. So that sounds as good as anything. Great, great. As long as you and I are feeling validated, then really, who Nailed cares? It. Yeah, we are so thrilled to be here today with. Well, Ned, can you talk a little bit about this piece? Because you you jumped in a little bit last week with how we were picking plays. And I just wanted to, could you walk through what we were doing when we found this one? Yeah. So so Rachel and I have been receiving wonderful submissions. By the way, listeners, if you're writing 10 to 20 minute pieces, send them to at the table readings at gmail.com. We read every single one. And then we sort of create a queue of pieces that we want to perform. And we have a couple in our queue right now. Maybe you'll hear them in future weeks. And uh, our playwright, who is here on the call, hello, Zach. Uh, you'll talk a little bit more with him in a, in a second. He's at the end of our queue to read through because Z is the beginning of his name. And we had figured out kind of what we were thinking of doing. And then we read this piece and we're immediately like, stop the presses. We want in. And so Rachel and I were on a Zoom at what time? Midnight? One o'clock in the morning? It was one in the morning. Yeah. Just to, we do we do things healthily around here. And um, uh, we immediately started chatting about this piece, which is wonderful. And I instantly knew that I wanted to work with one of the actors here. Uh, Both of the actors are people I've wanted to work with for a while, but one of them jumped right out and he also lives in London. So it was one o'clock in the morning and I immediately shot a WhatsApp and then thought, oh, this is going to go poorly when he gets it at 7 a.m., 6 a.m. I'm so sorry. And uh, here we all are. Uh, And we're going to jump in a little bit with our check-ins on the day. Um, I'd love to start with our playwright. Zach, how you doing? Could you uh, introduce yourself and tell everybody how you are? Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Zach Ezer. I'm a playwright. And uh, okay, doing pretty good. Where are you right now? I am in uh, Crown Heights, Brooklyn. Uh, yeah, you know, riding out the, the quarantine in my apartment, even as, you know, some folks have fled the city. Yes, sure. Yes, indeed. We're really excited to have Zach as part of our reading today. Um, and so you'll hear a lot more from Zach in our uh, interview episode. So we're going to jump straight to question number one for uh, At the Table. Actually, question number only typically for At the Table uh, actor interviews, which is what is the quarantine food or snack that's really getting you through this world event right now? Uh, so there's a I live next to a bakery. How dare you? Uh, it's pretty great. They haven't closed uh, and they I've been eating uh, a seven layer chocolate cake and I'm eating it constantly. I'm sorry. A what? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I mean, you know, slices occasionally. My partner and I got a, a whole one actually for our anniversary, which was pretty recent. And uh, my birthday's coming up next week, so I think we might do a whole other one soon. Yeah. Yes. Or just like do a whole other one every day of the week because <laughs> seven layer chocolate cake. Oh, and Zach, happy birthday! Happy oh, birthday! You. No, this isn't. Inter- I my partner's birthday is also coming up um, in in two weeks, and I it's a it's a big one. Um, he's turning forty, and we were gonna you he know will not I, appreciate you outing him like that. I mean, I love it. We're gonna put <laughs> pictures of this uh, of this wonderful human up on our website because 
I think it'll be fun for people to see him not looking. I mean, I resent the hell out of it, but he looks wonderful and he's turning 40 and I want to celebrate him. But um, are you doing anything? Do you have any big plans? I mean, you mentioned the chocolate cake, so that's already a pretty big plan. But are, do you have any expectations or hopes for, you know, kind of birthdays indoors? I'm a low-key birthday person generally. So to me, it's it's definitely coming down, but not as far as it maybe would have been for some. Uh, I think that I'm, you know, definitely not going to do work or anything like that. Uh, I'm taking the whole day. Uh, my partner and I, I think, are just going to, you know... Do you kind of what we've already been doing, where we, like, hang out most of the day and watch movies together? But I think I'll get to pick a few more. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's your birthday, so you get more agency. That's that's how good relationships should work. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, have you watched any? I'm going to add to this one because we won't probably get uh, have time for this in the playwright interview. Are are there any movies or TV shows that have been really kind of coming in in the clutch for you? So there's a movie I watched recently that I watched. I watched it before quarantine, but I have really become obsessed with it since it. Which is it's a Thai movie called Bad Genius. All right. Um, so it's about like cheating on standardized tests, but they shoot it like a heist film, like Ocean's Eleven. It is so fun, and it is like the distraction that I don't know I need, and I I, I think about it every day. Yeah. How old is this film? It's from like 2016 or 17. It's very recent. This is based on the like South Korea and China both cheated so much on the SATs one year that like they their whole country was banned from taking them for a while. <laughs> um, and this is based on that. That's that hustle. Ah. Uh. I can As jump the into SAT a whole, tutor. Yeah, I was gonna say my side hustle is is standardized test tutoring and teaching, which is turns out not as um not as pandemic proof as you may have thought, because the higher education world is um dissolving right now, basically. So yeah. uh, the industry itself is a little less stable than I would have hoped in a moment when theater has gone away. So um but yeah, I could st- also I'm still very into heist films and i feel like this would be very resonant for me i would love to watch this oh you should definitely watch it also i definitely feel you which is that i recently made the jump from mostly doing standardized test tutoring into working in admin in theater so it is oh, really no. just been a Boo. you know it's all gone. we just couldn't have known i feel like my partner and yeah. i are talking a lot about like pieces of life that we couldn't possibly have known we were not doing the pre- like the good preparedness thing for like I up until recently didn't think that I'd um I'd ever done direct deposit on my taxes uh, like for tax refunds a eh? because I don't normally have to worry about tax refunds um because eh, eh, I file poorly but also just in general and had no idea that it's like well I should probably do direct deposit in case there's a pandemic and they can get me my relief check faster like there's just no way to prepare for things like that no part of me oh, was yeah. like I should find a second side hustle in case secondary education and higher ed both go away at the same time. Um, Ajani, will you tell the folks who you are and and how are you? Uh, hey, so my name is Ajani. I'm a writer-director and um, I'm good. I'm present. Where are you? <clears throat> I'm currently in Enfield, which is in London. So I'm in London, UK. How is London? Is London on full? And how is London? Can you give us a full report on London? Uh, a full no, but, report. Yeah. Uh, tell us all about London. But uh, is it full stay at home order at this point? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're allowed to leave once for exercise and once for essential shopping. So that's like groceries. You know, you need to go to the pharmacy. That's about it. And they have like they they are actually patrolling with like police and stuff to make sure people aren't out like messing around. That hasn't that hasn't happened in New York yet, but we're I gonna... well I do feel like that's a little bit more even clarity of directive than sometimes we get in New York. There's a lot of like just stay at home because they assume stay at New home, Yorkers but are going like, to feel it out, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think now at least we're dealing with it seriously, so like police are finding people for being outside when they're not supposed to be. But I feel like that's good. I feel like we need that because before that, I guess we were super lax on it and then it just exploded. So now we're like super strict. Yeah. But now it's good. I, I mean, we're coping. I'm coping. So, yeah. Coping is, that'll that'll do. Teach me your ways. I'm surviving. I, I slept yeah, until one one twenty in the afternoon today. So teach me how to cope. Uh, Ajani, is there a food or snack that's really been pulling you through this time of global crisis? Um, so we went, um, I don't want to say bulk shopping because I don't want people to think that we're one of the guys who like stole all the toilet tissue, but, um, 
But we we went to a wholesale, like a Costco, and kind of bought wholesale stuff. And because we were being, you know, we were being healthy, so we're not going to buy snacks. We actually only bought, bought one snack, which is hobnobs. I'm not sure if that's an American thing. Yes, no, they're hobnobs. not, but I love them so much. Yeah, so... <laughs> So hobnobs have been my only snack of choice. <laughs> so what are time. what are hobnobs for those of us who do not? Um, they're like an OT biscuit, if that makes sense. That's my drag name. <laughs> 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 We're so glad to have OT biscuit join us today. Thanks. OT OT biscuit Sh- here. Shante, you stay. I do like very much that you're trying to be healthy, so you only d- got a bunch of hobnobs, which are like a bunch full of buttery cookies. biscuits. Yeah, I mean, I probably eat more than the the healthy allowance. What's, what's the supposed That's serving right. size of a hobnob? Oh, if don't it's do less this. Than a That's package, judgment. Then... I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> you, the, so the serving size during a global crisis is as many hobnobs as you want to eat. Exactly. Hundred percent. Uh, Johnny, before all this kind of went down, or even during all this going down, were you working on anything? Have you been what? Have, what's kind of been up your 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 world alley? Uh yeah. So I guess thankfully I've been in development for two TV shows. So I've been like, Congrats. I guess the contracts were. Thank you. The 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 contracts were signed before the lockdown. Hey. Yeah. So that, <laughs> yeah. So it was uh, even just like a couple of weeks ago, they were like, my agent was like, yo, so the way deposit 25% next week. I'm like, that's what I needed. Yes. So, so fortunately I've just been writing. And so it's been that case prior. And I guess it's going to continue for uh, hopefully a couple more months. Amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. Hey, uh, Johnny, I know we invited you here to be an actor, but also if you write a 10 to 20 minute piece, you know where to send it. 100%. Great. The man's busy right now, Ned. He's he's writing for people who are paying him. <laughs> he's legitimately working. <laughs> no, I'm trying, trying, trying. That's fantastic. And Justin, will you tell the people who you are? Hey. Uh, Excuse me, Odie Justin. Biscuit. <laughs> Odie Biscuit, the artist, the artist formerly known prior to the lockdown as Odie Biscuit. Uh, my name is Justin Schumann, and I am an actor, photographer, business owner, human monster that lives in Harlem in New York City. How you doing? I'm great. I've come to find that I'm a human who thrives in quarantine, which might be a special skill I didn't know was important prior, like Rachel was talking about things we couldn't possibly know we would need to be prepared for, but... I've secretly been preparing for being shut up in my apartment for years, I guess. Um, So I'm great. I'm also, I should say I'm quarantined with my boyfriend, which makes it infinitely more enjoyable. Uh, Sharing this with somebody else is, uh, I have found a necessity. So I'm really good, actually. Good. I'm so glad. Um, Thank you. I also um, know that you have a wonderful support system. And the reason I know this is because the other night, was Easter and I was bemoaning not having an ingredient to make um, like an Armenian Easter recipe that I make every year. And Justin's mother contacted me on Facebook and offered to drive into New York to get me the ingredient. She is a woman who I adore and also have met once. And she was reaching out to be like, I am happy to come bring you this ingredient so you can make this recipe uh, that for feels Easter. Right. I've never met Justin's mother, and she sent me an email once just to see how I was doing. Wait, that's true, Ned, right? Yeah. <laughs> I am so glad that my support system has become every people's support system because... And by that you mean your mother has just become our mother. <laughs> my mom has single-handedly used Facebook to uh, reach out and communicate with those in need, so... Thanks, Perry Apollo Schumann Shack. Now we thank you for your service. We will have a link to <laughs> Perry's uh, social media on the Facebook website <laughs> because it's worth it's worth following. Uh, it's worth mm-hmm. following Perry. Um, and Justin, this is actually a conversation that you and I have a, a good deal. Um, uh, I was so lucky to get to meet Zach and Johnny this week. I'm very excited to work with you. I got to work with Justin this past year down at the Alliance Theater in Atlanta. And uh, as a result, we spent a huge amount of time talking about snacks and the foods Mm -hmm. that we loved. But I haven't gotten to hear about uh, what's really pulling you through the quarantine. So can you talk to me about Um, what you're eating? I can absolutely talk to you about what I'm eating. I, prior to the quarantine, had rediscovered 
Snyder's honey mustard pretzel bits. Ooh. Mm. They are a wildly addictive snack um, that I now, again, like Adani, I don't want people to think that I've been buying in bulk needlessly, but I wouldn't say that people are like hunting for Snyder's honey mustard pretzel bits. So I don't feel terrible when I buy four bags of them. Um, So that's what I've been subsisting on mostly. But I also have to give a big shout out to Groupon, hashtag sponsored by Groupon. Uh, which Sponsor not, of the pod. Maybe we will be soon. Um, I have been buying all of my wine from Groupon. Uh, and oh. wine is also a very important snack because it is it is grapes. You can buy and wine on Groupon. You can buy like 35 bottles of wine at a time from Groupon. Back um, the fuck up. What? I will not. I will not. <laughs> I will not back the fuck up. I will. I, I will stand need that fuck Groupon. Up. I will send you the link. We'll post a link to the link from the links. And I have been receiving uh, many, much, very bottles of wine regularly. So it started with six red, bottles white, of red Red, white, all blend. of the above. Yeah. Honestly, it's been an assortment. It started with six bottles of Apothic Red, and we've just sort of, sponsored by Apothic, we've just sort of um Six bottles of Apothic Red there. is actually my drag name. That's lengthy. Yeah, I, I only work in I work in really obscure clubs. It's not a successful drag act. It's uh... okay, cool. So we'll catch you on RuPaul season sixteen. Um, and then the most recent shipment was a bottle, uh, a a crate, a case of twenty assorted bottles of wine that I think in total cost about a hundred bucks. So that's five dollars a bottle. Wow. Um, so those are my two snacks of choice. <laughs> Honey mustard pretzel bits and wine. All right. Mm. I'm going to say yeah. that's, um, I'm trying to think mustard's a seed. So that comes from the ground. So with the veggies involved, that's like a full meal. Yeah. Yeah. I would say my food pyramid looks good these days. <laughs> Great. Incredibly <laughs> mm-hmm. happy for you. Ned, have there been any other snacks since the last time we spoke that are pulling you through this week? Yeah, I made, um, so, so we went to our grocery store and as often happens, it's pretty bare because they're restocking every morning and they're running out every night. And, um, so we often build our grocery list by what we would like to have. And then a whole bunch of list of potential substitutes if they don't have what we're looking for. And so we were going to make this turkey meatball recipe that, uh, we make a lot and there was no ground turkey. So we got a bunch of beyond meat sausage and uh, made these sausage meatballs stuffed with pepper jack cheese. And we just made a lot of them, and I've been eating the crap out of them. So uh, that's my food of the week, is um, Beyond Meat sausage meatballs stuffed with pepper jack cheese. Beyond Meat, uh, sponsor of the pod. Sponsor of the pod, for sure. Yeah, sponsored by Beyond Meat. What about you, Rach? What you, what you got coming up? We did a thing this week where we got a bunch of we got some shipments of stuff, and then we also went to the grocery store. I don't know why people are walking away from the hoarding. We're hoarding. Um, I, I think it's two people, so at the end of the day, and we don't have a pantry or anywhere to put stuff. So at the end of the day... You have a small kitchen space. Yeah, we're not making much of a dent. So we're buying as much as we can and just living with it. Um, before all this started, um, uh, listeners of the pod can attest to the fact that I've actually been nervous for a lot longer than this pandemic, just as a person. And so we've had dry goods and like pantry items for a potential dangerous, scary time uh, for a while. And one of the things we had was like an 80 pack of um, fruit snacks like you give to children. Oh, what fruit snacks? I love fruit snacks. Well, it's changed a little bit because we ran out really quickly. So we got another one and we have a 40 pack of Mott's fruit snacks right now. We've, we opened it three days ago and it's pretty close to the end. The reason I started stockpiling for this eventual pandemic lockdown that I also didn't know was coming is because of Rachel Flynn, who I received a text one night and she said, um, oh gosh, what was the exact wording? Because it's really good. It was something to the effect of like, would you judge me if I told you something like crazy? And I was like, no, never. She was like, I've begun stockpiling. And I was like, do tell. And we jumped on a FaceTime and she was like, well, just in case things get not so good, I, I just have started, you know, the beginnings of a uh, bunker. I don't know what you would, of a bunk, you know, of a bunker, uh, in which I immediately said, like, sign me up. Where do I bunker myself? And so I placed two orders with Amazon and received a pretty large shipment of also pantry and dry goods. But I have Rachel Flynn to thank for my my pantry right now. So listeners of the pod. 
follow Rachel. Yeah, I think that this is the amount of anxiety you need to live in the world. Friends of mine elsewhere know that fruit snacks are my weakness, Rachel, but my cross to bear, like my, when I run for political office, my tagline is going to be gushers sold in like Skittles size bags. Cause like, I'm not here for the little packets of gushers. I want gushers in like a bag that I can get normal candy in. And I'm sure they exist somewhere, but they need to be in my bodegas. So this is my political move. Yeah. Um, and I it's think also I better can for the get elected on this. Yeah. That's fantastic. Last night at uh, two in the morning, I thought that I came up with the idea for, um, you know, the packets of cheese that they sell with Easy Mac, like the powdered cheese, um, just yeah. that, but in a jar. Uh, so if we ever make it through this, I'm going to make I'm going to make some money off of that. I'm going to have to learn how to make the cheese powder and process it and then sell it. Um, but then I'm going to be wealthy. It's so funny that you say that. My boyfriend had the exact same idea, but I believe with the Snyder's honey mustard pretzel bits and so the other night oh. um i took several of them into a sandwich bag and, and smashed them with a water bottle until they were dust and then we sprinkled them on top of the uh green beans we had that evening so shut it Rachel, down you are revolutionary it, well you know credit so, to john peterson so just in this, you two are handling dust. you're handling the broadway shutdown very very well yeah yeah but before this all happened, uh, I was doing Tina, the Tina Turner musical on Broadway. Uh, we opened November 7th. I don't think so. We opened November 7th, I believe. But we had a little bit of a run before this all got shut down on March 12th. And again, as of right now, we're being told that we are good to reopen whenever this does. And whenever that may be, which is it's cool because, again, it is a pretty commercial and corporate piece. But... In this time, I'm super grateful for that because there are a lot of shows that are not going to have the funding to reopen, which is when Broadway closed on the 12th, I had a, a really good cry on 8th Avenue. And it wasn't even really for me and my own experience, but it was this awareness that there were going to be pieces of art that would not, like the fact that I'm not going to get to see Laurie Metcalf do Virginia Woolf is it hurt my heart so it's bad. crushing. And then these shows that would just that closed that were never, you know, the fact that inheritance can get there last weekend and stuff, just, just like these little things. And I was like, Oh, it hurts so bad. So I am doing pretty well and I'm excited to have a show hopefully after all of this, but um, yeah, I'm handling the shutdown about as well as one could, I think. Both Justin and Ajani, is there anything that you have found has really helped you get through? Like either a, a something that that's that like maybe our, our listeners might be able to take away from your experience in the quarantine? I think that actually I've been again, there's, there's this whole like, you know, you got to build your hustle kind of energy going on in terms of like, you know, if you come out of this without a new skill or a new da 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 da, you wasting time and I think for a while, especially as a writer, because I know that writers are writing right now, I felt kind of overwhelmed by that pressure and subsequently not working at all. But actually, I think what's been good is a friend of mine reminded me of this kind of concept of deep work. So actually, I've only been working for like three hours a day. That's it. But it's like three hours, put away the phone, like put away all kind of, you know, all the tabs on my thing, which is not helpful. But yeah, just three hours of consistent work. And then that's it. Cool. Just chill, like back to whatever. And I think it's more important to have like consistency of short bursts rather than like, you know, stay up all night and bash out work and then you sleep the whole, the next two days. So yeah, I would just say three hours per day has been what's been like, a good tip that kind of changed the tide for me to kind of be more productive. Cool. Yeah, I would agree with it, Johnny. I think that for me, it's been leaning into uh, the daily structure and ritual and having, th you know, we try to put things on our weekly schedule that we can then look forward to. So every Monday and Thursday, we take yoga via Zoom, which is something that I had never done prior to this uh, quarantine, but it's something that I actually enjoy a lot. And so not yoga, but yoga from my living room. Uh, so two times a week we do yoga and every morning we make breakfast and most nights we make dinner. And it's, it's like finding the comfort in the daily rituals has been kind of beautiful. Last night I said to John, I was like, I can't tell if in this moment my life has ever felt bigger or smaller because 
I've managed to create a very fully fleshed out and realized enjoyable life in a two bedroom New York City apartment without almost ever leaving. So in that way, I'm like, wow, I have such a full, rich experience right now. But at the same time, I'm like, I am able to do this all in my apartment without ever leaving. Has my life ever been smaller? So it's a very weird thing that I think I'm vacillating between, but I'm choosing just to lean into the joy that I feel most of the time in this. And I appreciate it. I'm very grateful for the experience that I'm having because I know it's not the experience that many are having, but I'm enjoying this time to breathe. And like Johnny said, I'm, I'm not trying to hustle so hard that I burn out, but I don't know, take a step back and look at what makes me really happy and the things that I might choose to put down after this pandemic is over and the things I might choose to pick up. So leaning into ritual and uh, structure while home has been helpful for me. I love that from both of you, because honestly, I'm really bad at the thing that Johnny's talking about. I work 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. pretty much every day, uh, and I don't really know how to turn off. And then I often come back the next day and find that I'm just editing work I'm not happy with. And uh, I've been trying to force myself to do more of that. And uh, so that's really great to hear. Thank you. I've been really impressed, though, Ned, with um, the things that you've felt like genuinely interested in, um, just to give you a little bit more credit than that. Uh, genuinely you. interested in in pushing forward it, kind of separate from the hustle conversation. Like, I think that there are a lot of, I think, uh, Ajani, I, I felt the same way as you, which is that the sense that I was supposed to be doing the things to create the things to have the things made me do nothing. Um, uh, but Ned, I think separate from that sense of like, I must generate something, you were the one who picked up the phone and said you wanted to bring this podcast back. Um, uh, Ned got me involved in my very first Dungeons and Dragons campaign two weeks ago. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> so I'm now... I'm nothing if not on brand. That you are deeply on brand, but also you're deeply finding ways to connect with your extraordinary extroversion that are healthy and also not about like you must be doing something, but rather you want to be sharing more time. And I think that's lovely that you're following those impulses. Also because now oh, I get you. to play a... Um, like a cleric dwarf ranger, like, like fighter person. And, and I wouldn't have is been there able no, to do that. Is there no cute witch character in Dungeons and Dragons? The, no, I bring my own kind of cute witch persona and I play Energy. as me. I get it. I get mm-hmm. it. To the dwarf. Boom. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, on that, shout out to Kizza. Kizza is my character in Dungeons and Dragons. You've made me the person I was secretly hoping I could become when I was an adult, Ned. There, I said it. That's my superpower. I'm I'm very into it. Um, well, I'm really glad we got to chat with everybody a little bit. And now I'm hungry because we talked about uh, hobnobs and, frankly, wine. But let's jump into a show, shall we? Let's read a play? Let's read yeah. a play. How's everyone feel about reading a play, huh? Excellent. Oh, let's go, let's go. Let's do, it, right. let's do it. You've been listening to At the Table, a play reading series produced by Charging Moose Media. We are hosted by Rachel Flynn and Ned Donovan. Our artistic director and senior producer is Rachel Flynn. Editor is Ned Donovan. Associate producer is Megan Bagala. Music by Marcus Thorne Bagala. Thanks to our cast, Johnny Salmon and Justin Schumann. To learn more about them, visit our website at chargingmoosemedia.com slash at the table podcast. Be sure to listen to our full playwright interview episode with Zach Ezer releasing next week. You can find us on social media at At The Table Plays. Please connect with us. See you next time.